Welcome back. We are a couple of days away from the anniversary of September 11th. Maury, everyone has their story. Tell us a little bit about that day for you and Mr. Graham's reaction. Okay. I, um, on that day, I remember, thought I'd go to McDonald's, just grab an egg McMuffin and then head up the mountain. So I'd come through the drive through and actually maybe just taken one or two bites and then the, on the radio, they said that the building had just been hit by a full-size jet. So um, I drove straight up to the Grams and Ms. Graham was or really still asleep. Mr. Graham was tying his shoelaces. He was about to walk into the kitchen. So I helped him get situated. And then as we were walking down the hall, I told him what had happened. And so then I got him situated, got the TV turned on, made a pot of coffee for him. And then bam, here comes the second building mm -hmm. getting hit. So of course at that point for both of us, just utter sheer shock that, you know, what in the world is going on? And it was a little while after that that Ms. Graham came out and then we told her what was going on. So we were, like all of America, um, glued to the news the whole rest of the day. So Maury, a few days later, Mr. Graham had the opportunity to speak at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., but getting there was a little tricky. So tell us about that. Well, uh, President George Bush had made an appeal for Mr. Graham to please come to Washington to speak at a prayer service that would have been conducted two, three days later. And of course, from the event that had happened, every commercial flight in the entire United States was grounded for several days. And so um, the three presidents had to be brought to Washington first, and then Mr. Graham would have been the next person to bring in for the service. And so we literally had to wait all day long, hour after hour. And throughout his whole life, Mr. Graham always enjoyed a late morning or early afternoon flight, obviously always in daylight, you might say. And so as it got later and later in the day, I was concerned, and so was David Bruce. And sure enough, by the time we got to the airport, because we had nothing to do with the arrangements, uh, it was dark. And then as we left, um, it was really interesting thinking that we would have been the only commercial plane, you know, chartered plane that the White House had arranged, that there were no other planes in the sky. And so that was kind of an interesting feeling in itself. Mm -hmm. And when we arrived, uh, there was two vehicles, one car took Mr. Graham and David Bruce straight to the hotel and then I waited with the luggage. And interesting, the um, cab driver that I rode with, we were coming up on the Pentagon and he told me this was in Washington and of course the event was in New York, but he said that he was driving somebody that day and to his left all of a sudden here's this gigantic 737 airplane or 767, whatever it was flying just above him to the right, and then it came right over the top of his car and bam, straight into the Pentagon. He saw that plane hit. Mm. And he said that it was such a horrific event for him because it was just soon after the 9-11, um, both planes hit New York. So then it became evident this is way, way bigger than what anybody anticipated. Mm -hmm. With Mr. Graham being America's pastor, it was only fitting, I think, that he was the one that was there to comfort all of us after an event like that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. President, for calling this day of prayer and remembrance. We needed it at this time. We come together today to reaffirm our conviction that God cares for us, whatever our ethnic, religious or political background may be. The Bible says that he's the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles. No matter how hard we try, words simply cannot express the horror, the shock, and the revulsion we all feel over what took place 
in this nation on Tuesday morning. September 11 will go down in our history as a day to remember. Today we say to those who masterminded this cruel plot and to those who carried it out that the spirit of this nation will not be defeated by their twisted and diabolical schemes. Someday, those responsible will be brought to justice, as President Bush and our Congress have so forcefully stated. But today, we especially come together in this service to confess our, confess our need of God. We've always needed God from the very beginning of this nation. But today we need him especially.